Chef T at the Chef's Academy. Uh, today we're going to be carving pumpkins. Uh, there's a couple things that we need to know about picking out the pumpkin and how to get a nice carve. Uh, first of all, you want to pick out a pumpkin that's not necessarily perfectly round, um, unless that's, that's what you're going for. I like to, uh, to get kind of the most weird shaped pumpkins. Uh, I've got one that's uh, got all kinds of blisters and blemishes on it. It'll, uh, it'll look good for a witch or uh, something kind of scary like that. So this is a standard pumpkin. We want to find one that's it's pretty heavy for the, the weight. If it's light, uh, it's kind of drying out and it's not going to last that long. The stem should be intact. It should uh, be pretty fresh, not so dried out. The stem, keeping the stem on actually is going to preserve the pumpkin a little bit more. And pretty much we want little to no blemishes. This one's uh, not too bad. All right, so when it comes down to actually carving, uh, we want to use the right utensils. This is a store-bought kit. It's uh, middle of the line. It's not one of the cheap ones. It's not too flimsy. It's pretty durable. And it's not over, I'd say, uh, five or six dollars. Um, what's really nice is the scraper. When we take the top off, we want to, one, make sure it's large enough we can stick our hand down there to get the seeds out. Uh, we also, as opposed to going straight down, uh, that's how sometimes after the, the pumpkin ages, the top will fall down. We want to angle the knife as we cut. And you can, I just pretty much go in a straight circle. You can do the jagged uh, look, but this is easier for me. Pay attention where you start it so you can end up in the same spot. We take off the, the top. We want to see quite a bit of seed. While we scrape, we want to uh, get all of this gooey goodness out. We can separate the seeds from the pulp, toss those with a little bit of oil, salt, pepper, and uh, we can roast those in the oven. It's important to clean the inside of the pumpkin pretty good so it slows down the, uh, the decay of the pumpkin. And I would say if you're going to carve, I wouldn't carve any more than one week ahead of time so you have a nice looking pumpkin for the, the little trick-or-treaters. The side I'm going to carve, I want to take down extra meat off of the pumpkin, probably uh, within a half inch to one inch. Alright, so we've got the pumpkin all cleaned out on the inside. And I'd say it's probably right at a half inch thick. I'm going to put the face right here. And what I did, I just got online and I got a uh, template. You can use any picture you want as long as it's you know, blown up to the size uh, from a copier. This is a pretty good size. It's going to fill up the whole face. The thing is, if it's too small, of course you're not going to be able to see it that well. How I put the, uh, the template on, we can either tape it on, but since the pumpkin's round, I just get it wet. And that will uh, allow me to form fit it directly onto the pumpkin. Then I can take one of my sharp knives, we're going to take a toothpick, and we're going to kind of etch carving onto the pumpkin, then I can actually start carving, so I don't carve the paper on.
Once you have the stencil etched into the pumpkin, we want to check out which knives to use. The knife with the larger teeth is to take out more space and the knives with the closer together teeth, that is the detail knife. So what I want to do is just kind of gauge back to my picture so I can make sure that I've got all the right cuts. We want to think about which cuts we need to take away versus what needs to stay in. If you do a stencil yourself, you want to make sure that uh, if you've got an eyeball that's supposed to be left in the pumpkin, it's attached to one of the spaces. Seems like kind of one of those, no kidding, you know, type of statement, but uh, once you start cutting, you can easily slice right through something you were supposed to leave in there. So I will, this is pretty detailed, I will use a detail knife through most of this. The smaller the blade, the more maneuverable that uh, your cuts can be. If you have a lot of cuts that are going to be close together, it's good to leave the piece of pumpkin inside. Uh, and once you get pretty much everything cleared away, you can start popping the pieces out. That way you don't uh, accidentally break two pieces that are uh, supposed to be together as you're turning the pumpkin. Alright, so once you're done carving, you can inspect it, hold the picture up next to it. Uh, this one, I will say, it's going to be kind of hard to see what it is until it's dark and it's got a candle in it. And you can put a real candle in it or you can put uh, one of those electric candles. Uh, back to the, the stem, sometimes you can put a notch as you're taking off the, uh, the top in order to be able to tell it easier how to line up the, uh, put the top back on. But Pretty much that's it, you know, it's pretty painless. I would say uh, if you're a little bit nervous and in going into carving a pumpkin that you're not really familiar with, a different style, uh, it's not really a big deal. You know, two bucks, three dollars for a pumpkin, say so go ahead and give it a try after you know, three or four pumpkins, you'll feel a lot more comfortable. So again, this is Chef T, Carving Pumpkins.